is Angela Sasser of AngelicShades.com. I'm here to talk to you today about my recent piece called Oathbound. I created this piece for my book cover portfolio, so I immediately sat to think of what are my favorite book covers. And uh, the, the names that came to mind for me were Brahm and Jason Chan. Jason Chan especially did these amazing covers for the Broken Empire series by Mark Lawrence. And when you look at these covers, they're very minimalist. They have a minimalist background with focus on a very intense central character. And the, it, it, the composition immediately sucks you in and makes you want to know more about the mysterious, powerful character that you're looking at. And I wanted to channel that same kind of atmosphere and mood for my piece. The concept for this piece comes from my own original characters and worlds, which I've been dabbling with for years. The main character featured here is Rama Sirhan, an exiled wandering prince from a desert kingdom. Thumbnailing began very quickly in ballpoint pen, playing around with concepts such as the prince before his exile, in the theater watching a performance, all the way to the prince after exile where he's much more of a rough worldly figure. And I, I always start in pen so I can get my ideas down quickly without having to be concerned with details. And then I move into digital so that I can start filling out my values a little bit more, get a better idea of what my lighting and color palette might be, even though nothing's final and I'm not defining the details of the character design yet, just getting the basic idea and emotion across first. And if you're wondering about what the white borders are in the thumbnails, th those are borders that I've left to remind me where the bleed edge is so I can plan the image accordingly around that, so that when the image is sent to print, nothing important is included in those bleed areas. In the end, this particular thumbnail was my winner because it had a very simple composition. It was immediately striking. I put it to my critique groups online and a lot of them responded to that thumbnail more than the others. They wanted to know more about that character. So to me that says you've got a winner with a book cover. With the thumbnails complete, that meant it was time to dive into the details of this character which is quite a challenge because he's evolved from a more princely figure with a crown to a more warrior-like figure. Once I discovered more of his story and realized that in the story he is from a family of warriors, so having a flouncy crown and all that doesn't quite make sense. It makes sense for him to have a dagger and a sword as symbols of his reign. With this character's design, I really wanted to get away from the previous painting that I'd done of him as a werewolf with pointy elf-like ears and very magical looking. I wanted to bring him down to earth with a grittier design, and if there's magic in this world, it, I want it to be very subtle. So this is a very gritty mood I'm going for in this piece and with the character. And I did a lot of studies based on of nomadic warriors such as the Mongols in an attempt to find that look and feel for this character of his wanderer form since he's no longer a polished prince anymore he's a vagabond. I owe a lot of getting this final design to come together to this piece by concept artist Samantha Hogg. She did this fan art work of Rama for me and she just nailed it. He's got this intensity to him that's just perfect and I drew upon that for my re later renditions of this character. The next phase of this illustration involved taking photo references so I could get a better idea of how this pose works in real life, and also especially how the fingers wrap around the hilt of the blade, which is very complex to draw, and if you try to fudge anatomy like that, you can generally tell. And let's have a hand from my boyfriend who, because he lives with me, he got snagged to be my model. Next I did a preliminary drawing on toned paper using ballpoint pen and white color pencil to pluck out my highlights. This is to get a better idea of how I want my values grouped and to further refine the details of the piece. And I relied on my reference pretty heavily for this, and I even took this version into digital trying to establish a color palette before I realized it just wasn't working. I'd gone too far away from my original thumbnail, which now this new version just lost that intensity, it lost the strength of the composition, and so I scrapped it completely and started over. This next preliminary drawing that I did was much closer to my original thumbnail, and it just goes to show you that sometimes you can't stick so close to your photo references that you don't go with the composition that looks good. 
so even though this pose figure doesn't quite look right in real life, it looks good in the final illustration, and that's what counts. In the early planning phases, I tend to avoid looking up reference unless I really need to research something complex such as the dagger in this piece. Otherwise, I usually try to focus on the emotion and the composition first, but once you have all that established, then look up references for everything. Because the more references you have, the better, because the more realism and believability you add to your piece. When it came to establishing a color palette for this piece, I spent a lot of time using gamut masks to try and discover a color scheme that worked well. And if you are curious about gamut masks, try looking up James Gurney's website. He has a great tutorial on how to use a color wheel to restrict your palette so you're not just picking colors randomly that don't work together. And I also spent a lot of time looking up references of desert photos and these photos in particular helped me come up with the idea that a s sunset desert would be the perfect setting for this character. There was tension in the air, a storm is about to break. It's perfect for this figure. And finally, after all that preliminary work, painting began. I worked very loosely for this piece, throwing down colors, just trying to get the mood of the piece settled first before I got into all the tiny details. The colors went right on top of a uh, line art, which you saw earlier, and um, just keeping it loose, and also painting all in one layer so I will replicate the look of traditional painting, which has a lot of mistakes and has a lot of loose brush strokes, and that's what I like to try and do with my digital work. I should also note that I used Jonas DeRoe's brush set almost exclusively for this piece. There are a lot of great brushes with texture to them, and that helps with getting this style to look very classical and almost as if it was done traditionally instead of digitally, and that's the kind of look I like to go for in my work. At this phase, I'm just adding and refining details. A few problems already started to emerge this early on. The skin started to get too gray because I had too much blue in it, um, and I, you can also notice that the hair is very uniform and cartoonish. It's not very convincing as hair. It's kind of plastic and molded to his head. So pay attention in the next step. You'll see how finding reference for the hairline and the hair actually improved this piece so much. At this step you can see where I've added an orange glaze to the skin so that he's come to life more. He was looking a bit like a zombie in that last phase and that's also helped push this character towards the golden skin tone he's supposed to have. I've also changed the hair entirely where there's not so many details in it, it's, which is more convincing because hair actually isn't as reflective as all that. It's more dull than reflective unless you're under certain types of lighting and he's not actually out under very heavy lighting, he's under diffuse stormy lighting. You can also see where there's a blending from very faint hairs or bangs towards his hairline that go into thicker strands that are pulled back in the ponytail and that was specifically inspired by reference which made this piece look so much better. And I also like to get the faces of the characters finished first because that's the that's where we connect as people. We see other humans and we connect with that human and that figure. So I wanted to get that done first before I finalize the rest. At this phase, you can see where I've started finalizing the knife, adding detail and inset gems. Because it's such an important part of this piece, it's part of his symbolism as a character, the knife is a symbol of his right to rule. And I spent a lot of time with that knife. The knife and I are best friends. At this phase, you can see I've done a lot more refinement of the fingers and the ears. Because if you leave those, if you try to fudge those, they generally do not look right. So I again pulled out my reference and did a lot of back and forth making sure the ears and the fingers looked correct. The whole time I was also flipping the canvas so that I could see where the image skews. For some reason when you flip a canvas everything that you've drawn wrong just pops right out. It's much easier to see. So definitely do that to double check yourself every time. And here we are almost at the finish line. All of my lines from my preliminary drawing are pretty much painted over. 
There are so still some fiddly bits in this, such as the drapery and the cloak. I found that the wrinkles there were starting to look the same size. There's too much repetition. It was a little distracting that they're not as detailed as the rest of the picture. So by final, those drapery, the drapery bits from his cloak have been touched up a good deal. I actually had to go back and find more reference. I also had to take some of the detail out of the dagger since it would start to be lost if this were to go to print on an actual book cover. And here we are at the finished piece. I've done some post-processing in the form of a layer mask which fades the image to black at the edges. This is to help bring the viewer's eye to the middle of the piece. I hope you've enjoyed this glimpse into my painting process. If you've also enjoyed learning about Rama and his world, you can find more about him at the URL. If you've enjoyed my work, please consider heading over to my Patreon page where you can support me directly as an artist. By becoming my patron, you'll gain access to an exclusive work in progress journal where you can see my projects before everybody else does a monthly giveaway where you could win an original art item, prints, or other cool items from me. You'll get wallpapers for your phone and desktop, tutorials, and much more. Be sure to check it out. Thanks for watching! I hope you'll click subscribe to keep up with my latest videos. You can also check out the rest of my channel for more videos for artists and art appreciators. Wishing you all inspiration!